All right, I'm really excited to have my good friend Jeff Rose on today to kind of chat. And he is a, he's a CFP, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But basically, he's a financial advisor who's been doing this for many, many years. 16 plus years now. Yeah. I'm super excited to kind of hear your opinions on this because we haven't talked about this and you know we've been good friends for I don't know what six seven years and we've never talked about this so I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Well, this, is, this is gonna be fun. Um, your advice might be counter to what some other financial advisors have so mm -hmm. anyway I want to I approach this from a couple different angles but you right now you have had a lot of financial success yourself your business is doing really well you're crushing on YouTube like you just crossed what 160,000 subscribers or something? Heck yeah! So you should check his channel out and see where he is now because he's probably way beyond that by the time you're watching this. But um, but anyway, so you've just had a lot of success with the business, and so you might be in a place where you're investing a little bit different than maybe a beginner. But I'm curious right now how you are investing your money. What it like? What are you doing with your retirement? Uh, what tools are you using? Let's just kind of start with that. And I, I'm sure there's a ton to this, but let's just start unpacking pieces and I'll kind of pry and prod from there. So I'll give you a few examples. Like I know like in my Roth IRA, in my wife's Roth IRA, we have a taxable account, like a joint account. All of that is in individual stock okay. right now. Um, and I have a 401k uh, that is a combination of some ETS mutual funds and right now a ton of cash. Okay. Ton of cash. We can get back to that here in a second. Okay. Uh, I also have peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uh, I also have some uh, crowdfunding real estate, um, mm -hmm. you know, which fundrise, so like fundrise, and fundrise, stuff, yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and then, I mean, I also do look as you know the businesses I have as part of that. Yeah. But I know that's sure. a little bit, it's a little bit different. Thing, yeah, yeah. Outside of this, so but um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the the breakdown right now. I would say if you looked at my, other than the cash holdings, like everything else is definitely like on the more aggressive side. Yeah. You know, just, uh, I still think of myself as being young, even though I'm 40 now, I'm still <laughs> young. And, uh, and I'm also okay with, um, when people, we talk about risk, you know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, how much risk can you handle, which basically means is like, how much can you see your portfolio drop without having a heart attack, yeah. you know, or, or yeah. wanting to drive to your financial advisor's house and like, you know, meet them in their, in their, yeah. uh, in their driveway. But, um, you know, I've seen, you know, my accounts drop 30, 40%. Yeah. And I mean, I might kind of get the oh, crap, <laughs> but I don't get the like, oh, you know, I need to go see a, yeah. make an ER visit or anything like that. So yeah. I, I'm definitely okay with that right now. And we'll probably be okay with that for a long time. All right. So crowdfunding, um, or crowdfunding real estate. So Fundrise, are you with like Realty Shares? Are you just using Fundrise? Or just who, just who uh, Fundrise right now. Okay. So yeah, so we have a review on Fundrise. You can check that out. We'll have a little card up above. You want to check it out. Peer-to-peer um, -peer lending. Uh, lending Club, Prosper, who are you using? Um, I have, so of that, I think I have two-thirds with Lending Club and the rest with Prosper right now. Okay. Do you have an opinion about either or that you like more than the other? Um, I think my only experience has been with it was with Prosper, in a sense, semi-bad experience. So if you're ever looking at peer-to-peer -peer lending as something as a short-term investment, um, it, it's not. You know, this is definitely something yeah. that if you need your money quickly, it's not going to get to you quickly. So in their case, I, I had set up my accounts wrong. I had to basically liquidate the account and reopen a new account and transfer all that money over. And to sell like all the notes in that, it took almost, I think it was almost a month or two. Oh, wow. It's been a few years now, but I remember yeah. I, I just was amazed at how long it took to sell everything. Yeah. Uh, so that was not that experience. Um, I went back more towards Lending Club. Yeah. Uh, return wise, they're almost like identical. Okay. Really, really similar. And for anybody who isn't sure who might be a brand new investor, peer to peer lending is basically I want to start a business, I want to pay off my student loans, and Jeff and then 50 other people all front that money so that I can take a loan from this group of people instead of from a bank, right? Pretty much, Is that a good yep. way to explain it? Yep. The last trade I made was when I bought, I bought Facebook stock, I think a year, around a year after they IPO'd, because they IPO'd 
Yeah, came down. Came quick, down, yeah. and that's when I got in. Yeah. So good for you. Yeah, it was one of those. <laughs> it was good until they had the recent uh, thirty or forty percent yeah. sell off. But I mean, I'm still more than I think eight times like what I put into good. it. Good, so. that's awesome. So that's fun, and that's that's really been yeah. Like that's I think is the last stock trade I've made. Okay, so the stocks that you've purchased um, is this. How much research are you doing? Is this just Facebook is going to be a big deal, so I'm just going to invest in it? Like, yeah. Like, we're, some things it's like you can just kind of see the writing on the wall. I mean, is that your approach? You know, I feel like every, let me say this. Um, I feel like I can, I can put every stock that I've purchased in my life into two categories. One category is the ones I felt good about. Uh, I used the product or service in yeah. some way, and I just thought it was a good time to get in. Yeah. Whatever circumstance, whether it was the market, the, the fact they really haven't blown up yet. The other category is somebody else suggesting that, hey, you need to check out this stock. <laughs> like, this is a good time to get it. I want to hear how those went. <laughs> um, and it's so funny. I wish I could, like, just write down every one and, like, just put them in each bucket. But I'm pretty sure if I were, were to put those into winning or losing categories, yeah. all the suggestions are in the loss column. Yeah. Like, I honestly cannot think of one. <laughs> I'm, yeah. There might be one. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of one. I mean, that, that right there is a really good tip for new investors because, yeah, because when I first started investing, I had a couple of those recommendations, and it's like, just don't do it. If, you're, if your uncle who doesn't know anything about stocks is recommending a stock, it's like, it's too late. It doesn't yeah. matter how much money he's made. Just I feel it. like just a good rule of thumb is if you can't explain what they do yeah. or how they make money like to your neighbor or to your grandmother, yeah. I mean, then you really have no business investing into that. Yeah, I mean, because fundamentally, you're, like, you are owning a part of this company. It's like you should at least know what they're doing. Yeah, right? I mean, it's no different than somebody coming to you and say, hey, you want to give me a loan or invest into my business. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're not going to just give somebody you don't know or what they're doing with the money. You're, you know, you just don't do that. Yeah. Same thing buying a stock. Yeah, that's good. So let's come back to where you're talking about all the cash in your 401k. Is that what you said it is? <laughs> yeah. So I'm assuming this is because you are uh, pretty scared about the market right now. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. So I'm not a pessimist by any stretch, but I can go back to 2008 and I, and I remember all the buying opportunities. Yeah. And in fact, like just a, a fun story, like my father-in-law bought a thousand shares I guess I won't say the company. It's a company that you would know. Maybe you wear some of their clothing. But he bought a thousand shares of their company uh, stock. I think it was down to like five bucks a share. And then within a few years, uh, he made over a hundred thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! Wow. So um, was it a thousand shares or a thousand dollars? No, I think he put five thousand dollars in. Yeah. And had, was up a hundred thousand dollars, like in a few years. That's insane. And that was back in two thousand eight. And like that was just one example of hundreds yeah. you have examples you know warren buffett you know he talked about buying american and you know bought a bunch of ge stock when it was in like the five to six dollar range they kind of had a sell-off here recently but still i mean there was so yeah. much money to be made yeah and at the time like i i didn't have a lot of cash set aside for that i was still growing the business you know and yeah. i think we built a house and kids and everything else whereas now it's like there's going to be a sell-off i'm not hoping for like another great recession by any stretch i just feel like yeah. a sell is coming yeah and if i'm sitting on cash for you know a year or two years i'm okay with the fact if i can go in and buy something and make six times my return yeah. you know in a short amount of time so that's yeah. that's part of the reason yeah and if the market drops 25 percent and you've been sitting on the sidelines for two years it's like yeah you're gonna be in good shape yeah <laughs> that, that's that's the idea yeah. you know i think the one thing i feel like the biggest hurdle that many people get stuck on when it comes to investing, especially when you're just starting out, you know, whether you're doing $100 a month or $500 a month, you know, when did you get to a point where you've got, let's just say even like $10,000 like yeah. saved up, like for many, like that's a lot, Yeah. you know, and let's say for that entire year, that $10,000 makes 10%. Mm -hmm. I mean, anytime you make double digit return, like that's, that's good. Yeah. yeah. But when you actually quantify that, you know, 10% 10, 10 of 10,000 is 1,000 bucks. It's like, oh, I just made $1,000. Whee! You know, yeah. for some people, it's like, yeah. really? Like, I, especially when you think of, like, I mean, gambling, yeah. uh, you know, or you, yeah. you see people talking about cryptocurrency or uh, all these crazy returns that people make. I mean, that, it's hard to get really excited about that. Yeah. 
And it's really, to me, it's like I've, all, I've just run all these charts and all like these numbers to see, like in that first 10 years, when you start investing, like it's really not that sexy. Like it's kind of boring. Yeah. And it's like, that's all I'm making? Like I, I could be doing something else with it, even, even though people don't know what that really is, but yeah. they feel like they could be. Yeah. And the power, though, is in that last 10 years. Yep. You know, that last 10 years is where you start seeing when you make 10% off of 100000 or 500000 now you just make $50,000 in a year yep. on 10%. But you couldn't be there. We couldn't be there unless, yeah. you know, so I often, I often compare it to it feels like you're walking on a treadmill. Mm -hmm. You know, you're walking and maybe you're, you, you want to be running. But the reality, like, you're not going to get there any faster because the yeah. power of compounding interest is time. Yep. You know, and those that want to go more aggressive, I mean, you can do that, but that's usually when people get burned, yeah. you know, because they just can't stand that. Uh, so I think that's the one thing, just to understand, like, it does take time. I mean, there's a reason they call it compounding interest because it does take time. I see a lot of people comment on my YouTube channel about this. Like, I don't know where to get started. You know, do I do this platform or this app yeah. or, and the reality is like, I don't think it matters. Yeah. Like, oh, do I need to buy this index fund or this ETF? I don't think it matters. Especially if you haven't started investing or you haven't invested a lot. Yeah, because there are so many people who want to start but aren't starting exactly what you're saying because they're afraid and they don't know what to do. They want to do the perfect thing. and. Yeah, and I've always told people the same thing. It's like, just start doing something. Even if it's a savings account, you're doing something. Yeah. And then you'll you'll learn more and, you know, continue to learn more. But, yeah. Yeah. That's why I love, uh, I mean, especially nowadays, like there's so, uh, technology has removed any excuse or obstacle yeah. when it comes to investing. You know, it, even like right now, if you want to open an, an account with me and you live locally, like you have to come into the office, uh, you know, sign some paperwork, you know, give us a, a voided check, you know, or write us a check, make a deposit. It's just, I mean, yeah, we could do some of that e-sign, but still, as now, like, you can download an app like Robinhood, yeah. you know, transfer some money in and literally have, a, I think, a stock traded like that day. Maybe yeah. it might take a day or two for your funds to, yeah. to settle, but still, like, you could do that on your phone and get that set up, like, in less than 10 minutes. Yeah. Like, that's ridiculous. And if you don't trust yourself, picking stocks or other investments, then you have like Betterment or Wealthfront where you just open the account, you tell them what your financial goal is, yeah. you know, saving for a home, vacation, retirement, and then they choose the investment strategy for you. Yeah. I mean, okay, so what, what other excuse do you have? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and like, you know, we did a review about Acorns, which is another one of those things where it's like, you can start this in five minutes. You literally can start with a dollar or no money to start investing. And it's the same type of thing where you're picking your, basically your risk tolerance and then the money managers are taking care of the rest. But like the options that we have today, I mean, even from 15 years ago, oh, like are so much better. So much There's better. There's so many more yeah, options yeah. really. And I always, the, the, the story I always share is that when I first started investing, like the first investment I made was into two mutual funds. I was doing, I was only doing 25 bucks a month and I can only invest in them every other month, I think, because there was like a $50 minimum. And I don't think these mutual funds even exist to this day. <laughs> um, a, a broker that I was, I was an intern at the time. So one of the brokers there in the office, she suggested it to me. I didn't know anything about mutual funds. I didn't know anything about these no. mutual funds. I was like, sure, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was in the business longer and understood more of the options, I looked at them like, these actually aren't very good. <laughs> like, they, they weren't horrible. Uh, they yeah. were, they were average. Yeah. And but like, I didn't lose my butt. Yeah. And I always tell people because like, you don't really when you start, you're not going to start invest. I mean, most people, at least in my experience, you don't start investing with like tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. You know, you're starting with a couple hundred bucks a month. And if you're starting in one of these places we mentioned, even if you do lose a little bit, you're not going to lose your butt. Yeah. And you're going to learn. I mean, just through the statements that you get, through the emails that you get, notifications from having those accounts, like that's how that's how you learn. It's part of your education. That's part of the education. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, I remember doing, uh, this was years ago when I first, I took a class about stock investing and they had us set up like a mock portfolio at the time, so you could go on Yahoo or something and pretend to buy all these stocks, you know, with the pretend thousand dollars or something, and see how you did. In which that was educational, but 
I think nothing compares to actually putting real money in the game. Because like when it's your real money, like that's when you are really paying attention. And yeah, when you have skin in the game, like that's when you learn. Yeah, and this is like, so some of my advice that, uh, that Dave Ramsey would not agree with <laughs> You know, if you subscribe to Dave Ramsey, he talks about if you have a 401k, get your uh, do the 401k, get the free money in the match. Yeah. After you do the match, go to the Roth IRA, mm -hmm. max that out, and then come back to 401k. And I mean, that's not bad advice by any stretch. But like you kind of said, having skin in the game, my experience has been when people sign up for a 401k, they just sign a piece of paper, they fax it off, or turn it into HR, and then they're done. Yeah. Like they don't even really realize what they're picking. Yeah. Oftentimes they have pre-selected funds or investment options for you. So you don't really have to do any research. So my advice I like to say is actually, I want you to go open a Roth IRA first. Hmm. And the reason is because you, you have to actually do a little extra work, a little extra groundwork, a little extra yeah. study, research, whatever. Yeah. Um, now you can go online and still do it, but, yeah. but still it forces- There's a little more ownership. It puts you yeah. in the driver's seat. Yeah. And so I, I just like that idea. Um, unless, unless you're one of those actually is going to do the research, that's fine. Follow Dave, you yeah. know? I mean, you probably should follow Dave anyway, but. <laughs> just setting an appointment with the financial advisor, even if it's just like, hey, I want to pay for an hour of your time to take a look at my 401k, my 401k options, and help me choose yeah. the best one for me. And if you did that once a year, it'd be fine. And probably, you could probably go a few years without having that retooled. Yeah. Um, once a year to be safe, kind of like your annual checkup you know, with your doctor. Sure. I remember when I was in high school, the Roth IRA was relatively new. And I had a friend of mine say, hey, you need to get the Roth, do a Roth IRA. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know how this guy in high school even knew about it. But I remember him saying that thinking, yeah, okay, sure, buddy, whatever, you yeah. know. I just think back, like, man, even at 18, if I would have put in 25, 50 bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. And I see so many people, they always, the excuse is like, oh, I'm going to wait till fill in the blank. Yeah. You know, wait till I get a job, wait till I pay off some debt, wait till I, whatever that is. And, I mean, 25 bucks a month. Yeah. You know, like that can have a tremendous impact on just everything you know it's, yeah. it's not compounding interest yes but just like we talked about getting started investing where you're getting more experience you know and knowledge yep. just by starting with a small amount yeah. it's like why wouldn't you want to start today when you don't have a lot of money so that by the time you do have money it's like oh right i i already got rid of a lot of the things i didn't know about you yeah. know i already made some of my mistakes you know, yeah. I'd rather make a mistake with five hundred dollars than like five thousand. Yeah. Uh, so I just think the sooner that you can start on anything is just so much better. I'm super excited. Uh, just so we got to chat about this. Yeah. I think uh, some good stuff came out. Wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Good. Good. <laughs> I'll save the gotcha interview for next time. But.